Students participating in the animal activity will be asked to explore the consequences of light pollution on wildlife. Specifically, this activity focuses on the impact of light pollution on the migration of the Kirtland's warbler. In order to get students thinking about the types of issues that light pollution can cause for animals, first call their attention to the issues poster. This poster presents a number of problems in the form of letters written to the city's mayor. The mayor will be acted by the teacher, while the students will serve as members of a task force assigned to find potential solutions to these problems. In order to provide more information about uh, the impact of light pollution on animals, next call their attention to the animals poster. This poster describes the impact of light pollution on animals including sea turtles, birds, and insects, as well as other animals, and also provides some information on the impact of light pollution on sleep cycles in both humans and animals. Additionally, the animals poster contains information on the activity contained within the kit. All of the materials necessary to complete this activity can be found within the kit, which is what we'll explore next. The animals activity allows students to act as Kirtland's warblers as they follow their annual migratory path. Inside your kit, you'll find a clear plastic envelope labeled animals. Inside of this kit, you'll find a fact sheet and instructions for the game. The fact sheet was provided by ecologist and environmental scientist Travis Longcore, who recommended this species of birds uh, for the activity due to the effect that light pollution has on their behavior. The Kirtland's warbler follows an annual migratory path from the Bahamas, 2,200 kilometers north to the lower peninsula of Michigan. Uh, this happens in May of every year, and the birds remain in Michigan for several months while they nest, lay their eggs, and tend to their young. In October of the same year, the birds fly back to the Bahamas following the same 2,200 kilometer path. After students are acquainted with the rules of the game and with the Kirtland's warblers, find the game board in the bottom of your kit and place it on the table. In addition to the fact sheet and the instructions for the game, you'll also find the pieces necessary to play inside of your envelope. This kit should include a die, which players use to roll in order to determine the number of spaces that they should move on their turn. The kit also includes a number of buttons which serve as play, uh, pieces for the players. Inside of the kit, you'll also find two sets of cards. One set of cards is labeled migration cards. These represent experiences that the birds might encounter as they follow their migra migratory path to and from Michigan. The second set of nesting cards represent activities that the birds might experience while spending time in their nesting grounds in Michigan. Now that we understand the basics of the game, let's try a playthrough in order to get a better idea of how it actually works. Players begin the game by placing their button on the blue start square. Blue squares represent the northbound migration from the Bahamas to the nesting grounds in the lower peninsula of Michigan. The yellow area represents the nesting grounds in Michigan. Green squares represent the southbound migration back from the nesting grounds to their home in the Bahamas. Let's try playing the game. Player one rolls the die. Player one has rolled a two. This player has landed on a migration card square, which means that they draw a migration card and read the text on the back. You've flown through a city. Unfortunately, you hit a building and do not survive. Go back to start. The player follows the instructions on the card and moves back to the start square. Now player two rolls. <laughs> player two has rolled a four.
This square does not have any text, so the player simply stays on the square until their next turn. Now it's player three's turn. Player three has rolled a three. This is also a migration card square. You've flown through a city. Luckily, you fly right through. The player remains on this square until their next turn. Now it's time for player four. Player four rolls a six. Player four landed on a migration card. You stop to rest, but city lights cause you to turn back to find sufficient ground cover from long grass. Go back three steps. Players continue in this fashion until they arrive in the nesting grounds. Even if a player rolls high enough to move directly past the nesting area, they still must wait in the nesting area for four turns. At the beginning of each turn, a player draws a nesting card. To indicate this, player one draws a nesting card. Too many city lights. Hard to find eight acres of young jack pine forest to nest. Now player two draws a nesting card. Hard to find 30 acres of young, dense jack pine forest to raise your chicks with so many city lights. And player three draws a nesting card. This is a get out of nesting grounds free card. On your next turn, roll the dice to move. The remaining players draw nesting cards at the beginning of their turns, and then player three rolls the dice to leave. Player three has rolled a one. Player three is now out of the nesting grounds and the game proceeds uh, in a similar fashion to how the player followed the migration to the nesting grounds. The first player to reach the finish square wins the game. A player can roll any number sufficient to move the correct number of spaces to move to the finish Rolling a higher number still allows the player to finish the game. Winning the game represents the bird that reached the Bahamas first and is therefore least affected by light pollution. A couple of notes. If you're asked to move back spaces as a result of pulling a migration card and you land on another migration card square, you must pull another migration card and follow the instructions on the back. Enjoy the game. After students have played the game, they should be asked to revisit the issues poster in order to apply their experience to solving the problems that they initially confronted. While students have experienced the issues firsthand, they might not have sufficient experience to find solutions themselves. This being the case, they should be encouraged to collaborate with other groups, such as the Light Trespassing Group, in order to find creative solutions to the problem. Once students have found a solution, they should present those solutions to the class in the form of a video, a PowerPoint presentation, a poster, or an oral presentation. One idea for a going further activity would be to ask the students to create their own game based on an animal from their own environment, which is affected by light pollution.